All right. Thank you, Sean. Hi, everyone. My name is Mark Kurtz. I'm here to talk over some of the research collaborations that we've been working on with Cerebris. But first, a little bit of background on who we are and uh, what we're doing. We're a Series A startup based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, and built on top of some leading research that was pulled out of MIT. Specifically, we, fo we focus on model optimization and being able to utilize that through software to uh, inference faster. On top of that, across our entire team, we have over 200 plus research, uh, research publications, as well as 60 patents on top of our technology. We even invented many of the state-of-the-art um, state art algorithms that you may have already used. This includes sparse GPT and GPTQ for large language model compression. Our solutions include enterprise-ready uh, inference software and inference serving software, including what we're calling for now, NMVLM, which is focused on GPUs, as well as deep sparse, which is focused on CPUs. And finally, we have sparse ML, which is what we push out for our open source research, all productized and ready to use on top of, uh, on top of what we have available. Finally, in the same vein of collaborations with Cerebrus, we like to collaborate with others as well. We just launched a partnership with Akamai last week, and additionally, we've pushed out great, great results with AMD in the past. Now, diving in a little bit more into deployment of LLMs, specifically because we've talked a lot about the size of the models and the issues that we have with training them, these issues compound as companies move into deployment. Specifically, the size of these models require lots of compute, lots of memory, and ultimately increase the latency for us being able to deploy applications for our users. This means that it's very demanding on our inference software, and especially on our serving infrastructure. Ultimately, to get down to the latencies that we need, this means it becomes expensive to operate and expensive to support. The options include the options to try and remedy this currently include trying to reduce the model size or quantize, talking, so talking into decreasing the size of the LLMs. We can see that going from a 70 billion to a 7 billion parameter model can significantly reduce the accuracy and potentially push it outside of what might be possible for the applications we're trying to deploy. Even utilizing the state-of-the-art research for N4 quantization, currently, we can take that 70 billion model, and it's still going to be two and a half times larger than a 7 billion parameter model that's unoptimized. So this sets up a problem, which is do we need to scale our models down, accept the accuracy loss, and therefore uh, deploy an application that may not be relevant to our users? And this is where we started pushing with Cerebrus, which is exploring sparsity. So we're going to take a neural network, if it's quantized or not, we're going to remove the connections that are unimportant, and this is specifically because, as Sean said, while training, these connections allow us to explore a large optimization space. But at inference time, we've already converged on that. So there's a ton of redundancy left over in these networks that we can completely remove. So, with unstructured sparsity, we can come in, preserve the model accuracy while reducing the size and ideally getting the best of both worlds. Next, we can then use this to improve our inference and training performance. Talking through our research collaboration with Cerebris, we set out on a core goal, which was to be able to create open source sparse models that both enterprise and the community can utilize within their own applications for inference speed up. Looking through the process, we started with our Llama 2 pre-trained models for Meta, applied our sparse GPT algorithm to create unstructured sparse versions of these models. The unstructured sparsity is important here because any kind of structure that we add on top of these models immediately reduces the accuracy. Even something as simple as block structure with 2.4 means that we are no longer achieving the same accuracy at the same sparsity level, and we need to significantly scale back that sparsity. Now, after creating those unstructured sparse models, 
we need to retrain them a little bit. And this is because we've diverged, especially at the highest sparsity levels that we're trying to achieve, we've diverged from what the original model was. And this is where Cerebrus became so core to our problem. Their ability to be able to speed up sparse training, specifically on unstructured sparsity, meant that we could have anywhere from 1.7 to 2.4x reduction in flops. This all translated to savings for us in terms of, um, in terms of total cost to train these models, but more importantly, we could iterate faster on these problems. So this results in our sparse foundational models. Specifically today, we're launching 70% uh, and 50% 50% sparse Llama 2 7 billion models ready for the community to use. All of these recover to within 90% or better of the original baseline accuracy. But the next step was to take those and then see what it does for actual use cases for these pre-trained models. So specifically, we took those foundational models, fine-tuned them onto a set of specific use cases and then quantize them with our GBTQ algorithm. We focused on chat and code generation to start off with. And again, we created 50% and 70% sparse versions of these models. So let's dive into the results on these models and talk a little bit more about what that means. To our surprise, and a lot of hard work that went behind it, we actually were able to get full recovery at 70% sparsity we were able to remove almost 5 billion parameters from those models and still match the baseline. It's a significant reduction in size. This is in contrast to doing this with our sparse GPT algorithm on its own, where at 70% sparsity, these models become unusable. Now let's look at memory, right? And especially in combination with the industry standard event four. We can see our 70% sparse models are able to compress much more than our int4 weights. And specifically, at FP16, we we're able to reduce that memory by 4.3x. Coming back to our process, as I said, these models are all available. And additionally, we pushed out all of the code and all of the research into our open source uh, repositories so you can take those sparse foundational models and fine tune them onto your own use cases. Next, let's look at what that means for an inference use case then, right? Because this was our entire goal, to try and improve that performance. Specifically, we'll start off with local inference. We're looking at an eight core AMD Genoa system and what the performance looks like. For a single stream, we end up hitting 20 tokens per second on that eight core CPU. Beating out the int4 standard of llama.cpp, but additionally, looking at our single stream latency, right, our time, our time to first token, we can see the, um, the immense drop that we have with that 70% model, and in combination with activation quantization, this now makes, ultimately, real-time chat available for your local devices, including laptops, desktops, whatever you need to use. Diving into a server setup, we took a 16-core system and compared it to a standard setup with an A10 GPU. As we can see here, for single code or uh, single stream decode performance, that CPU system is able to beat a standard setup on an A10 GPU enabling a lot more flexibility on top of that. Even diving into a multi-stream case, where it is more GPU friendly, we can see that the 70% sparse model is competitive with that GPU. This is looking at 32 concurrent streams and how many uh, tokens we can generate per second. So ultimately, sparsity enabled us to allow CPUs to be competitive with GPUs. And with that, we still have the benefit of the large memory that goes along with CPUs. So, it's enough charts. Let's talk about what this looks like in action. Running through, 
we have our sparse quantized model versus an unoptimized model. As we can see, significantly faster, and it's already created its first paragraph, while the unoptimized model is struggling to do its first sentence. This is all towards the same quality uh, for our input prompt, where we, create, where we ask it to create a story about sparse neurons. So, coming back and looking at our key takeaways. First, for local inference, we're able to improve performance by up to 4x over the top of the current standard on CPUs. Additionally, when we scale this out into a server scenario, we're able to further increase that performance up to 7x. On, and this is specifically looking at how many inference streams we can do concurrently at the same performance level. And finally, we're able to use Cerebrus to train 2x faster on their platform to create these sparse models. So, help. Now, looking at next steps, as I said, all of these models are immediately available. We have them available on Hugging Face. You can download them, play with them yourselves. Additionally, we have our docs page available, which will walk through guides, tutorials, things like that on how to get started with these models. And finally, you can dive into Cerebrus's results on sparse training in their blog. Stay tuned, though, for additional, um, additional action items that are coming out of us. We will continue our research collaboration with Cerebrus. Ultimately, our goal is to wrap all of these results that we just walked through and more, the research behind it, into a paper we'll be pushing up on Archive. And in addition, expanding past what we have available right now by increasing our model sizes, increasing sparsity through continued algorithmic uh, advancements, combining it with better quantization techniques or lower quantization techniques such as N4, and ultimately putting everything together into parameter efficient fine tuning such as QLORA. So, thank you everyone. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, feel free to follow us on X, on LinkedIn, or join our Slack community. Thanks again. Thank you, Mark.